Hi everybody, Reach Heath here, and welcome back to yet another exciting episode of Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth Prosecutor's Path, Episodes 1 through 5 Beta. Let's find out what these guys are doing here. You guys? What are you guys doing here? We followed you here, Chifu. We heard that Chifu was investigating the incident from 12 years ago. You idiots! I'm not your boss anymore. Get back to your own posts. Sir, we can't do that. What'd you say? Are you disobeying my order? Chifu, we also beg of you. Reinvestigate the SS5 incident from 12 years ago. None of us could ever forget that case. We know you feel the same way, Chifu. Agent Lang. Even your former subordinates desire you to reinvestigate the case. And you think you can solve the mysteries of that case? Perhaps I can. With your help. <laughs> I got it. I accept your invitation. Shifu! 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 <laughs> now then, with that decided, I guess it's my turn to shine. Okay. We're investigating a case from the past, right? And guess what the best tool for that is? The Little Mr. Thief. Right. If we have the case files from the past case, I can recreate it. Unfortunately, I don't have the case files. Huh? What do you mean? Access to those case files is restricted. It's being treated as a highly classified information. Why is that? I don't know, but it seems like there were a lot of things that they wanted to keep hidden. Even what I know is limited to what was published in the newspapers back then. That will not be a problem. In any case, please tell us what you know. Sure. Okay. The SS5 incident. The incident occurred on a winter day 12 years ago. It was the 10th of February. The police department in this country received a call from a group of kidnappers. We've kidnapped President Huang, they said. Kidnapped? The SS5 incident was the case of President Huang's kidnapping. They demanded a ransom of 100 million dollars. 100 million? Wait, just how much is that? It's such a large amount, she's having trouble visualizing it. That night, my old man was the last person to meet with the president. They were together at the Jiangfa Embassy until midnight on February 10th. After that, no one knows what the president was doing up until he was kidnapped. With the president's life at stake, the Jiangfa government frantically gathered the money. After that, the ransom was delivered and the president was returned safe and sound. So, President Huang has been the president since 12 years ago. That's really amazing. I wonder if... Like, I'm starting to wonder, and I could be completely wrong here, but I think maybe there's two President Huangs. I think that there is actual, real, buff President Huang, and then I think that there is fake, flabby, blow-up, muscle suit President Huang. And I think that when they paid the ransom to the organization that kidnapped Huang, they didn't get actual Huang back. They got back Huang in disguise. And that's what caused him to change his personality and get rid of his most trusted lieutenants. Uh, he was switching them out so that nobody would know his secret. To what end, I don't know. But that's what I'm thinking about right now. Let's see how this plays out. Well, being in office for so long is just a small part of how amazing the man is. Lang seemed a bit happy when he said that. And what happened to the kidnappers? Well, the top secret covert investigation was carried out. Then a secret trial was held. A trial? Does that mean the suspect was caught? The suspect was Patricia Rowland. Then, the reason you came to the prison a few days ago... Yeah, I was put on extended leave from the Interpol. So I decided to go back and reinvestigate what happened 12 years ago. 
First, I had to get a look at the face of my target. So the trial 12 years ago ended with a not guilty verdict. Yeah. Back then, my old man was in charge of every aspect of the president's security. He took responsibility for the kidnapping and was relieved of his post as bodyguard. But he continued to investigate as a regular police officer until he finally found the culprit. And it was none other than Patricia Rowland. There was no way she could be innocent. However, the result was a not guilty verdict. In the end, the case went unsolved. Just as an aside, I love this theme that's playing right now. It's so moody. Ah, oh, I really dig it. Just groove out for a second. Yeah. Okay. Crushed in both body and soul, my old man resigned from the police. What was the basis for arresting Patricia Rowland? There was a lot of evidence. At least that's what I think. But I can't see those documents for myself. So that's where my story ends. What should we do? With only this much information, even the little thief would have a hard time producing a recreation. <sighs> Is there really nothing we can do? <laughs> I was just thinking to myself, it's about time for somebody to show up. Uh, and somebody has. Who's that? Oh, hey, guys. Francisca. And Mr. Shields, too. We finished up with the trial and finally managed to catch up with you guys. Here, take this. This is... Ah! It's the case files for the SS5 incident, sir! Oh, that's convenient. SS5 incident files jotted down in my organizer. When Roland mentioned 12 years ago during the trial, it caught my interest. It caught mine too, so I'm going to look at these case files right now. 12 years ago, the president was kidnapped and a witness was killed. President of Zheng Fa, Di Jun Huang, was kidnapped on February 10th, 12 years ago. Kidnappers demanded a ransom of $100 million. Dai Long Lang confirmed that on the evening of the incident, the president was at the Zheng Fa embassy until midnight. Prosecutor blazed the best, suspect Patricia Rowland. Isn't that interesting? I looked into it immediately and got in touch with Interpol. I expected no less from you, Francisca. Don't get the wrong idea, Miles Edgeworth. I didn't prepare these documents for you, the former prosecutor. Boy, she's really so, uh, she's really sore about that. But okay, I did it for I did it for the sake of inve. La la la. Let's try that again. I did it for the sake of the investigator taking up the case his father left behind. Sis. But I thought information on the SS5 incident was restricted to the public. That restriction was placed by the prosecutor in charge of the case, Blaise de Best. Blaise de Best was the prosecutor in charge? Him. However, as a result of the trial just now, Blaze's authority has been revoked. It's all thanks to his son, Sebastian. By bringing down his father, the door to this past case has been opened. Prosecutor DeBest is currently wrapping things up in Patricia Rowland's trial. He told me to relay this message to you. Leave Pops and his cohorts to me. You guys just take care of the case on your end. <laughs> He's become quite reliable right before our very eyes. Truly. Alrighty then. This is perfect. Now that we have the files, just leave the recreation to me. Indeed. Well then, let us begin. According to these documents, it appears that the incident took place right in front of the Tower Plaza. Then let's head to the plaza right away. That's convenient that it happened uh, there and not in Zheng Fa. Okay, would you please activate the little, um, I don't, <laughs> I almost said the little mermaid. That's not what's happening here. Would you please activate the little Mr. Thief? Right. With these case files, recreating everything should be a snap. 
Where should I start? Where indeed? According to these documents, it seems there was a witness to the kidnapping of the president. A freelance journalist by the name of Jack Cameron. Hmm. He reminds me of someone. I don't think this is related to the case at all. I think that he's just like literally reminding me of a celebrity or someone and I can't think of who it is. Whatever. However, he happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and was murdered by the culprit. So that would mean the place he saw the president at was here. Here? At the Grand Tower? No, the Grand Tower was only built around a year ago, okay? Before that, this place contained mostly old abandoned buildings. However, 12 years ago, this place was... Ha! Now you're finally talking about some stuff that I know! Yeah, 12 years ago, what this very spot was... The Happy Family Home. What's that, pal? It was a place where children who had lost their parents could live. Or to put it simply, it was an orphanage. Ooh, I bet that's where that kid was, uh, who, like, we don't know where he went after case three or four or whatever that was. I bet that's where he was. Bet he's gonna come into the case and be involved. Oh, yeah. Let's find out. So the president was kidnapped at the orf at that orphanage. And the head of that facility at the time was Patricia Rowland. <laughs> the fuck? Apparently, Rowland always referred to it as her home. It seems that suspicion would naturally fall upon her. Patricia Rowland, Blaise de Best, and President Huang. The darkness that remains from the SS5 incident still casts a shadow in the present case. Okay, I'd like you to input the investigation data from Jack Cameron's murder case. We can probably assume that he was killed by one of the kidnappers. So if we solve the murder case, we'll know who the kidnappers were, right? Precisely. I'm counting on you. Alright. Wow. <laughs> Alright. He would have no idea how this works. What, what the heck is this? Everything's green. I've come to expect such reactions. This is a recreation of the grinds of the facility that stood here 12 years ago. Based on the documents from the police investigation. I recreated the scene to show what it looked like when police arrived at 7 a.m. the next day. It appears a fair amount of snow had piled up here. Yeah. I heard that the footprints in the snow were prime pieces of evidence. The snow fell during the day, on the day of the incident. So the snow only fell before the crime took place. Which means the footprints wouldn't have been erased by any further snow. I must make sure to pay close attention to these footprints. Ooh, let's investigate some stuff! I'm pumped. This case is so cool. These footprints stop near the body. They must be Mr. Cameron's footprints. He sure has some big feet. They look like a size 11. <laughs> Fun fact, I'm super tall. I'm 6 feet 8 inches tall. I reach Heath am, and I have size 18 shoes. Pretty wild. So, uh, this guy Cameron's feet, not as big as mine. Fuck him. <laughs> I'm sure he's a very nice guy. According to the data, his shoes match these footprints. Okay, so we know that that's where he was going. Who these? The footprints here seem to lead to and from the body. These footprints were believed to be the culprits. The shoe size is about a size 7. That's fairly average. It seems we won't be able to tell who the culprit is from these footprints. That's interesting, because I think Blaze is quite tall. So I guess he probably wasn't involved in the physical aspect of the kidnapping. Okay, doesn't say. I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be pretty tall. Is this a cell phone? Can we look at the cell phone? Oh, yeah, look at the whole body. And then we look at the cell phone. 
So this is the eyewitnesses of the. Uh, so this is the eyewitnesses of the president's kidnapping, Jack Cameron. Oh, the eyewitness of the president's kidnapping, Jack Cameron. What exactly did he witness? I've recreated the state of his body based on the photos taken by the police. It appears he was struck in the head from behind. The murder weapon was a brick, right? It looks like the ones from this garden. The blood that flowed from his head had splattered all over the surroundings. Here, take this. It's Mr. Cameron's autopsy report. Oh, good. Cameron's autopsy report jotted down in my organizer. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. But first, I'm going to look at this autopsy report. COD, bludgeon to death. Time of death, February 10th, around 1 a.m. 31. 12 years ago, around 1 a.m., died instantly after he hit his head with a brick. He was likely killed just after leaving a message from his cell phone. Ooh, then we really gotta check out that cell phone. There we go. I assume this is the victim's cell phone. That's right. Um, apparently Mr. Cameron gave his eyewitness testimony over the cell phone. What do you mean by over the cell phone? After Cameron found the president, it seems that he called his girlfriend. But she didn't answer the phone, so Cameron left a message on her answering machine. The tape is in the case files, too. You want to hear it? Please. Hello, Jill. Are you asleep already? I'm in front of the facility now, but something's not right. President Huang is here, of all places. And what's more... Crap. The light just went off. I can barely see a thing now. I can't believe it, but it almost looks like he's being kidnapped. I thought I'd let you know. Oh. Ooh. Wow. Yikes. What was that sound at the end? It seems he was attacked while he was still on the phone. Agent Lang, may I ask? What was the name of Mr. Cameron's beloved? I'm pretty sure I heard her name was Jill Crane. Man. I love this game because of many reasons, uh, but in particular, it's so cool how it feels as though every case remains relevant all the way through the game, especially now that we're going like back to Patricia Rowland and we're doing this stuff with Blaze and now we're going in with Jill Crane. We've got Horace Knightley stuff from the first case. It's just really remarkable how they're tying all of this together uh, to a degree that really hasn't happened in an Ace Attorney game before, I don't think. Very, very cool stuff. So, it was true. D did you say Jill? This was why she was seeking revenge for twelve long years. The feelings and the items Miss Crane inherited from her beloved brought her to the auction. She had come to exact revenge on the conductor, Blaze. But Miss Crane tried to get revenge on Blaze, right? She may have wanted to get revenge on him for covering up the kidnapping case. Or perhaps she thought Blaze himself was the kidnapper. Cameron's testimony jotted down in my organizer. Dang. Body. Jack Cameron was a freelance journalist. He was killed because he witnessed the president's kidnapping. The blood really stands out in the recreation. It's giving me the heebie-jeebies. Even in the original photo, it looks brutal enough. A lot of blood was spilled. The back of his head is covered in blood. That must be where all the blood spilled from. According to the autopsy report, he was struck in the back of the head with a brick. Indeed, it's likely that the killer approached Mr. Cameron from behind. Hmm? Is the victim holding something in his right hand? That's also written in the case files. Um, it seems he was holding onto a button. A button? Did he tear it off the culprit's clothes? Hmm. I wonder who's wearing buttons. Uh, we can't see. Okay. I was kind of hoping that we would get to uh, Raymond and we'd see that he's like wearing some buttons on his shirt that are fairly distinct. But I guess not. Oh! You know who does have some buttons? Um, 
Patricia Rowland does. She's got that coat with all those buttons on it. Hmm, I wonder. Bloodstained button data jotted down in my organizer. What's happening here? This is the brick that was used as the murder weapon. Oh, nice logic. You can find bricks like this all over the garden. They must have used one of them as a weapon. Okay. What else we got? Oh, hey! I think this is uh, one of those flowers that Justine likes. A yellow flower has fallen here. In the language of flowers, it means a stolen treasure. Okay, please stop making things up. <laughs> Still, this flower seems to be of a different variety from the ones growing nearby. Hmm. Well, then why is it in a place like this? This bothers me a little. We should examine the flower bed itself after this. Oh, okay. I knew it. Someone must have stolen this from somewhere and brought it here. Okay. And in the language of flowers, this means an angry prosecutor. <laughs> I really appreciate that they've been hanging out long enough that they know just how to... The Kano's just how to push Edward, Edward's buttons. Hmm. The victim was carrying a camera. Oh. According to the case files, it seems he only managed to take a single photo. Um, here it is. Oh. Th this is... Isn't that the president? He's being held at gunpoint. This must be the scene the victim witnessed. So the person in the coat must be the kidnapper. Indeed, it seems like some sort of disguise. If the logic of Agent Lang's father is correct, then this person should be Patricia Rowland. But why is there only one photo? Perhaps he was killed before he could take any more. Cameron's photo data jotted down in my organizer. All right, so I think that's probably all. Let's check. I already checked this area earlier, but it never hurts to do a look. All right, let's look, let's look at the flower bed. A flower bed. According to the data, this facility had three gardens. And each of these gardens contained three flower beds. Hmm. Hmm. The way these flower beds are lined up. Have I seen this arrangement somewhere before? Hmm. Since it was during the winter, there were no flowers in bloom. What a shame. Hmm. What's this yellow flower? Huh? Why is there a single flower here? That is a lion lily. It's a very rare type of lily. Did you say lion lily? That's the flower Miss Courtney gave to the president. What's it doing here? Could it be just a coincidence? If I recall, the lion lily originates from Asia. In the language of flowers, it means the bond between parent and child. I never knew you were so familiar with flowers. That much is common sense. You're simply lacking in your studies, my research bus. Alrighty. Anything else we can uh, examine here? We look at, uh, look at the orphanage. This door. I remember seeing it from somewhere. Of course you would. It looks exactly like the Grand Tower door we saw earlier. But this is a recreation from 12 years ago. That means the door has been here since then. It seems that when the Grand Tower was built, they decided to reuse the door rather than destroy it. It's like the old saying goes, discover something new by heating up something old. Oh, it seems she's understood the correct meaning of a saying for once. Hmm. But if you're using a microwave to do it, don't heat it for over five minutes. <laughs> Alright, Kay. Can we do anything with logic right now? What do we have in here? Hmm. I don't think we can connect any of that yet. What's up, Justin? Uh, Justine? Please, ask me anything you wish. You have my heartfelt thanks for bringing John back. Oh, even the thought of him not coming back makes me... Hey, old man. 
Don't bully my mom. No, that wasn't my intention. Whoa, look at him go. Mommy's little knight in shining armor. He's so cool. It's not like that. Quit blabbering stupid stuff about me. John, please wait. May I proceed, Mr. Edgeworth? My actions were unbecoming of one who calls herself a servant of the goddess of law. I won't ask for forgiveness. However, I... Judge Courtney, I am not as well acquainted with the goddess of law as you are. However, isn't that goddess also a mother to, of other gods? Ah. The law makes exceptions for extenuating circumstances. It understands a mother's heart. I'd say perhaps your goddess sympathizes with you more than you think. M Mr. Edgeworth. I don't get it. What the heck are you two blabbering about? It's okay, John. I don't have a clue either. <laughs> it seems the dust has settled on day one of Patricia Rowland's trial. Yes, while a decision has yet to be reached, I would say a guilty verdict is quite likely. I'm sure a thorough investigation into her connections with Blaze will be conducted as well. After seeing Sebastian today, I know we can put our faith in him. Just like Kay, Sebastian is also in the midst of training for the future ahead. Huh, I see. When you say it like that, I guess we have more in common than I thought. I said a few mean things to him, so the next time we meet, I'd like to apologize to him. I'm sure you will get your opportunity, but for now... Yes, at present, solving this case is our top priority. Okay. Oh. Now that I'm looking at this more carefully, what's this weird streak of shit here? This pillar appears to be burnt. Oh, okay. According to the files, it seems there was a fire on the evening of the incident. A fire? Um, let's see here. Huh? It says that one of the children at the orphanage spilled kerosene and set it on fire as a prank. What a horrible prank. You suck, kid. I guess that kid had far too much energy. And thanks to that, we can't make out any of the footprints near the main hall. <coughs> Excuse me. Fire data jotted down in my organizer. You know, I wonder if there's a way that we can... Okay, no, not really. I had a thought, and I think it's a stupid thought. Um, maybe, we, maybe we'll be able to see more clearly in uh, the video. If I'm remembering right, because when I, uh... When I looked at the gardens, um, Edgeworth said, like, oh, I I wonder where I've seen this pattern before. Um, I think that's the pattern of the hoof prints, right? I think that the hoof prints on the set were kind of laid out in the same way. So, are we supposed to... Let's connect these. Oh, this is stupid. <laughs> Okay. All right. That's fine. Perhaps this is the true nature of the monster's footprints. True nature? Compare the positions of the three footprints and the three flower beds on the left. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Ah. The exposed areas of dirt match the areas where the flower beds were. So Blaze dug holes in front of where each of the three flower beds used to be. Exactly. Now, why would he do such a thing? Do I believe we have a piece of evidence that tells us why. Why did Blaze dig holes in the ground near the flower beds? Uh, I don't know. Um, do the gloves, maybe? No. So. Hmm. Well, let's just go all the way through. It's not this. It's not. 
this. Yeah, no. As soon as you have a bone fracture across the body, you're going to this pressure. Open last night, Mozilla design. Well, actually, maybe, uh, maybe like it was because he was trying to get evidence from the case that he buried. <sighs> this is the reason why Blaze dug holes in the ground near the flower beds. Aha! So, what does this tell us? Hmm, isn't it obvious? No, it's not. <laughs> Obviously. This tells us absolutely nothing at all. Please be more serious, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> mm. Well, that wasn't it. Let's take another look at the evidence. There must be something in there. Indeed, there must be some piece of evidence that explains Blaze's actions. Why did Blaze dig a hose in the ground near the flower beds? Okay, so where were we? I think we... I can't think of why it would be that. I don't really see anything in that that would be it. Uh, I don't think it's anything that has to do with this. <gasps> Flower bed. The report from Patricia Rowland to Blaise de Best. It said that something was laid to rest in front of the flower beds. So Blaze was following Ms. Rowland's instructions to dig it up. But why would he dig up three holes? The report didn't state which of the three flower beds the item was in front of. Oh, so Blaze didn't know exactly where to dig. That's why he had to dig up all three spots. Most likely, yes. I'm sure Blaze himself was none too happy about that. He went through all that trouble. I wonder what he was trying to dig up. Hmm. Can logic anything else now? This, no, because the, the police found, yeah, okay. At first I was like, maybe he was uh, digging up the flower beds so we could get the murder weapon. But the murder weapon was right there. The police found it. That was dumb. Uh, okay, what else can we look at here? So we already looked at the footprints. Uh, we haven't talked to you yet. Scruffy, don't you dare say a word. I'm warning you. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, please help me, sir. What is it, Detective Gamshaw? It's about the story behind the SS5 incident, sir. Even though Blaze may have lost his authority, there's no way you can get confidential documents this quickly. That got me curious, so I made a few calls and asked around. And I found out that Ms. Von Karma used all sorts of forceful tactics to... Scrappy, I thought I warned you. Ah! You've done a lot for us, Franziska. I promise I will bring this to an end with my own hands. <laughs> what are you doing, secretly the villain of this whole thing, maybe? This scene sure puts a chill in your bones. Uncle Ray needs a hot babe to keep him warm. Oh, I hate you so much. Could you please try to be a little more serious? Oh, if that's what Kay wants, I guess I have no choice. Miles. This is where it all began, isn't that right? Yes, I fear that is the case. What was Patricia and Blaze's true goal? There are still many mysteries yet to be solved. Indeed, it is just as you say. Particularly the mystery of what'll happen to Kay Ray's love. Isn't it suspenseful? She's 17. Not even a little. You just couldn't resist, could you, Mr. Shields? Why can't you ever stay serious for more than a minute? I think he's genuinely incapable of staying serious for that long. And he's also a scary pervert. So we looked at the door, we looked at that. Oh, we haven't talked to John. What's up, John? 
Ooh. What do you want? John, I'd like you to tell me the exact details of your kidnapping. You were kidnapped at the garbage pickup area, right? Why'd you go there? You don't have to act as a go-between. I can just talk to the old man directly. So he says. Looks like he's finally starting to warm up to you. I went to the garbage pickup to throw away the flowers I found on the body. It was nearby, and I thought it'd be harder to find there. Uh, I thought it'd be harder to find there than if I just tossed them in a trash can. I went there last night too, but the gate was locked. And that's why you went there again today to dispose of them. Yeah, but when I got there, someone suddenly grabbed me from behind. And you used sleepy zzz on you, right? Catching Z's now is super easy with sleepy zzz. Even though she was also a victim to it, she seems to have taken a liking to the slogan. Whoever grabbed me was really strong, but that's all I know. I have no idea who it was. I see. So that's what happened. So that's what happened indeed. After the drugs wore off, did you notice anything about your surroundings? Those drugs were brought to you by Sleepy Zzz. Catching Zzz is now super easy with Sleepy Zzz. <laughs> okay. It was kind of dark when I woke up. I was in a dark, empty room. Boxes with foreign writing on them were lying around, so I figured I was in a warehouse. The whole place was like a giant refrigerator. It was a commercial warehouse. That's right. John was rescued thanks to the collective efforts of Kay and Detective Gumshoe. Since it was still a bit cold, the cooling unit's power must not have been cut for too long. For some reason, they didn't think to take my phone, so... I used it to call for help. I see. In any case, it's good that you're safe and sound, John. Huh. I don't need your fake sympathy, old man. What an incorrigible child. <laughs> He's just like a certain someone I know. Okay, so we've... I think we... Oh, oh, we haven't talked to you guys. What's happening? What a scoop. Would you look at that? Those folks have done turd... <laughs> Those folks have done turned green. Maybe they're sick or something, but their clothes are green too. Well, I'll be. Their clothes are all green too. I reckon this ain't no ordinary disease. You picked up. You picked up on something good. Looks like you're taking it to the next level. Yes, Chief. It looks like there's no way we'll be getting a word in. Not that I have any desire to intervene. Let's see. We talked to Lang, right? Oh, I guess not. Three flower beds and snow. Agent Lang, what's the matter? Something strange. I wasn't able to read the SS5 incident case files until now. Since Blaze had all, uh, had all access to the information restricted. Yeah, that's right. And yet I feel like I've seen this exact scene somewhere before. What do you mean? Where did I see this? If I could just remember. He looks deep in thought. I should leave him alone for a while. Oh. We've learned pretty much all that we can about the situation at the time of the murder. Ah. Oh, in that case, is there another scene you'd like to recreate? Yes. Would you do the honors? I would like you to recreate the scene when the victim witnessed the president's kidnapping. Right. I'll recreate the scene based on Mr. Cameron's photo. It looks like she's just holding a silenced pistol every time she takes the little thief out. Like, okay, I'm going to recreate the scene. Pa, pa, pa. You're all dead. Ha, ha. Mr. Cameron is standing in the middle of the flower beds. And the president and his kidnapper are standing on the road. Oh, whoops. And the president and his kidnapper are standing on the road. My old man based his initial investigation on this man's eyewitness testimony. As a result, it led him to believe that the kidnapping and this facility were related. And that's how he came to suspect the head of the orphanage, Patricia Rowland. Yeah. 
But in court, Blaze de Best treated this testimony as if it meant nothing. Why would he do that? The president and his kidnapper were not standing inside the orphanage grounds. So a connection between the orphanage and the kidnapping was difficult to prove. I see. It's not like they were seen inside the orphanage after all. <laughs> no matter how much evidence the detectives gather at the crime scene, it doesn't mean squat if the prosecutor won't use it in court. Blaze de Best had some kind of connection with Patricia Rowland. I figure they had some kind of deal going on. In other words, you think that Blaze was one of the kidnappers. Oh. However, your father was convinced that Patricia Rowland was the culprit. Your father was a highly capable investigator, I presume. Might he have had some other basis for his conclusion besides the eyewitness testimony? Yeah, I figure he did, but I have no idea what it was. My old man never really talked much about this case. Agent Lang's father, Dai Long Lang. President Huang's most trusted confidant. The truth he discovered was suppressed by Blaze de Best. First, we must find the hidden truth. But that's going to have to wait for next time. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. In the next episode, we plunge into the depths of the moment of the incident. Aw, oh, yeah. See you then.